were trying to form a committee of six from five males and eight females. We want to find the probability that there is an equal number of male and female um, teachers in our committee. So I've already pre-written some of the um, information here just because there's a lot to write. So if there are a total of six teachers and we want an equal number of male and female, that means there need to be needs to be three male and three female. So what we're going to do is find the number of ways to choose three male and three female and divide that by the number of ways to choose six teachers. Okay. So we're going to find the number of ways that fit the scenario we're looking for and divide it by the total number of ways just to make this committee. So because we're trying to find the number of ways for two things to happen, what we can do is find the number of ways to choose three males times the number of ways to choose three females. The reason being is that if there are X number of ways to choose three males and Y number of ways to choose three females, then there's X times Y number of ways to choose them both. Okay, this is the fundamental counting principle. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is figure out what type of counting principle we're going to need to use to be able to find these, um, these values. Whenever you see the word committee, it's going to be a key word to help you to realize that you're going to be using a combination. Committee is just a group of people, so they aren't ranked. Because they're not ranked, they don't have any order. So order in which the people are chosen is not important. It doesn't matter who you choose first. All that matters is that that person is in the group. Okay? So what I'm going to do is have three separate combinations. The number of ways to choose three males, I'm first going to need to figure out my total values here. So. The first thing that we know is that we're going to choose a total of six from five males, eight females. So that means there's a total of 13. Okay. So if I want to choose three males, I'm going to say there are a total of five males, and I need to choose three, so I'm going to do five, choose three. Then I'm going to multiply that by the number of ways to choose three females. Well, I'm choosing three from eight, so it'll be eight, choose three. Okay. Now, the number of ways to choose six teachers, regardless of whether they are male or female, is we choose six from the total 13, so 13 C. So I'm going to do this one by hand, and then I'm actually going to show you how to do it um, with the calculator. Um, I'll probably have to pause in the middle of this to do that because I don't have my calculator open. But let's start by doing this by hand. So the formula for NCR is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R. Okay. So let's start with this one, 5C3. So that's 5 factorial over 3 factorial, and 5 minus 3 is 2, so 2 factorial. Then times 8 factorial, 3 factorial, 5 factorial. Okay, so there's my numerator. Then 13 factorial over 6 factorial, and then 7 factorial, and that's my denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this by hand by expanding everything out. Now, I could go ahead and cross these 5 factorials out, but I'm not going to do that because I want to find out, you know, how many ways are there to choose 3 males. So I'm going to start by saying, okay, I'm going to expand this factorial until I get to the highest factorial that is in the denominator. So I'm going to expand this one until I get to 3 factorial. So I do 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. The reason I do that is so I can cross my 3 factorials out. Now 2 factorial is just 2 times 1, so it's just 2. Okay. 
Now let's do the same thing with 8 factorial. We're going to expand it until we get to 5. So 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial. So 3 factorial. Um, I'm sorry, let me write 3 is. 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1, so it's just 6 times 5 factorial. So I can cross out my 5 factorials. Okay. Now, this should evaluate to a non-fraction. Okay, so that means everything in the denominator should be able to cancel out. We'll notice this 2 could cancel out with that 4, leaving me with a 2. Also notice both of these 6s could cancel out. So let's finish by doing the denominator. This one's going to take a little more expansion. We're going to expand 13 to 17. So 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7 factorial. All over 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And I'm going to drop the 1 times 7 factorial. Okay, cross out my 7 factorials. Okay, now let's see what else we can cancel out. Well, this 12 will cancel out with that 6 and 2. This 5 and 10 will cancel out, but that will leave, leave us with 2. This 4 and 8 will cancel out, but that will leave us with 2. And this 9 and 3 will cancel out, but that will leave us with a 3. Okay. So, let's write what we have left. So in this first piece here, I have 5 times 2. Let me actually put more parentheses here. Okay. So this is the first piece. That's the number of ways to choose three men. And then 8 times 7 is the number of ways to choose three women. Okay. And then 13 times 11 times 2 times 3 times 2 would be the number of ways to choose six teachers. Okay. Now, we can see that this is... 10, so there's 10 ways to choose 3 men, and there's 56 ways to choose 3 women. And if you were to multiply this all out, you would get 17, 16. Okay. Which goes to 560 over 17, 16. Now I'm going to need to simplify this fraction. So the only reason I did this one here is I wanted to really know how many ways there were to choose three men and how many ways there were to choose three women and how many ways there were to choose six teachers. So this gave me those individual values. It's really not a good idea to use this here because this is not a simplified fraction. It's actually best to leave this form here and start simplifying from this because it'll be easy to see what can cancel out. Well, I know these twos can cancel out. And I know that 2 can cancel out with that 8, leaving me with a 4. So it's 5 times 4 times 7, which is 140. And 13 times 11 times 3, which is 429. So um, I just, instead of using this value, I use this one because this is the simplified version of this one. So I'm going to stop for a moment and then come back and show you how to do this in calculator. Because most of these calculations for combinations by hand are rather tedious, especially this whole uh, expanding out the factorials and crossing out common factors, some people prefer to do these in your calculator. Well, if you don't have a calculator exactly like mine, that's fine. Most scientific and graphing calculators are going to work very similarly. So one thing that you might want to do is you might want to just evaluate the factorials by doing... Um, by hitting math and then pressing over to the PRB and then notice number four is the factorial. So you could do all the factorials individually. Now you can also use um, the function for combination. So what you do is you put the first value, five, and then math over to PRB, then down to three. And then you hit the second number and enter. So notice it says 10. And you do that for each one of them. You can put it all in one string. So you can do 5, 3, oops, wait, let's go ahead and put extra parentheses in here, just in case. 
times 8 math PRV 3 3 close my parentheses and then divide that by 13 math over 3 6 close my parentheses and if you want this as a fraction instead of a decimal, you could just do math fraction 140 over 429. So notice that that is the same thing that we got.